I won't lie. We Mexicans do quite a few things that might seem weird for a foreigner. We have some attitudes and customs that are just part of our culture, which we expect everybody else to understand, but we don't realize they're unusual. At the same time, they can be so subtle that a newcomer might not see them. Let me tell you some behaviors and attitudes that we Mexicans have and which prove especially baffling to visitors to this country. Stick around and let me show you how the unfamiliar Mexican cultural quirks could confuse outsiders. <laughs> no! No! Unfortunately, it's not unusual to see a lot of street dogs wandering around in Mexico. They're usually very angry because they're hungry or because they have been neglected. I get angry as well when I'm very hungry so I can understand them. This is something funny that we Mexicans do when we feel frightened by street dogs and we worry that it might bite us or chase us. The imaginary rot. It works 100% of the time, nobody gets hurt, and you don't even need to get tired running away from the dog. Let me explain. When I was a child, I lived in a city where there were a lot of street dogs or people who would buy dogs to protect their houses. They weren't the cutest because the idea was to protect the property and keep the people away from the property. So this was probably my number one worry when I was alone and or with friends. Whenever I would walk past a house with a dog without a leash, I'd start wondering what to do. I don't think I could outrun a dog, and my brain would begin to think of a solution. This is when the absurd, imaginary, but effective rock comes in handy. Just bend over, pick up an imaginary rock, and throw it at the dog. And it's not just me doing that. To prove it, I asked my fellow Mexicans on Instagram and the same answer came over and over again. I'm sure you wouldn't imagine that we Mexicans do that to protect ourselves from the dogs. And I want to ask you guys, in your countries, do you do the same? This is a little bit weird even for those who are from another Spanish-speaking country. If somebody is calling me, I wouldn't say what or qué to acknowledge that I heard. Hija, mm. qué? It's a little bit rude and impolite. I wouldn't answer my grandmother or my mother qué because she would say, Se dice mande, no qué. From a very young age, we as children know that we, if we want to avoid the scolding, Mande should be the word that we have to use. And we don't only use Mande to answer an old person. We use Mande for everybody. Everybody deserves politeness, right? Some Spanish-speaking foreigners think that these words sound submissive. But why? To them, the word sounds like being in medieval times, as if you were talking to a king or a lord. The word Mande comes from the verb mandar which means to give an order. So every time they hear Monday, they hear, what are my orders? I read this was a common way to answer a century ago. It seems the term vanished in Spain, whereas in Mexico, it seems it's still in use. Hija, Monday. Some people say that this was the way people from lower social classes would respond to the nobility. There's no clear evidence but it's a good theory, isn't it? There's a very similar word still used in the Catalan language. They say manim. I don't know the correct pronunciation, but it means tell me. Who knows if it has to do with the word that we say today in Mexico? Just let me know in the comments. Mexican gastronomy is famous all over the world. I'm sure you can all name some famous dishes. 
chilaquiles, enchiladas, sopes. But think about it. How many of these dishes are cooked in an oven? In Mexican gastronomy, we don't use an oven every day. It's just not useful for us. On top of that, it's very common for people here in Mexico, especially grandmas, to have a lot of different dishes or pot and pots to prepare and serve this delicious Mexican food. They have to have a lot of space to store the pots and dishes. Because of this, the oven in a Mexican house usually takes on an additional role. In a Mexican kitchen, the primary function of the oven is to store plastic bags, pots, pans, you name it. A Mexican oven is actually the most expensive storage space in the house. The downside of this is that when you do want to bake something, you have to find somewhere else to put your plastic bags, pots, pans, and much more. But I honestly think it's just part of our culture because even though there might be enough space in our kitchen, there will always be something in the oven. The need to hoard pots or pans or plastic bags in the oven has become part of our culture. Just look at all these people showing off what they have in the oven. I just want to take a moment to thank all my patrons who are supporting this channel I'm really glad you enjoy my channel. I'm very, very happy for that. Thank you very much, guys. And if you aren't a patron, don't worry. Your view and your likes and your comments matter a lot, really, and encourage me to create more and more videos. Thank you very much. And I'm gonna leave my social media just in the description if you can check it out. If you don't know what a bolillo is, you might think this is just another piece of bread, but you'd be wrong. Especially in Mexico City, the bolillo is an integral part of Mexican cuisine and it can be used to contain all manner of delicacies. For example, chilaquiles or even tamales. It's a lot of carbohydrates for me. The bolillo has another more spiritual function. This is a popular belief deeply rooted in the Mexican mindset. El bolillo para el susto. It is said, the bolillo can calm your nerves. When I was a child, I loved playing on my bicycle. I had so much energy that I would come back with some cuts, bruises, injuries or lacerations. It never bothered me too much. I was having fun. One day, I rode my bike to buy some tortillas. I was riding along so happily, imagining what delicacies my grandmother would prepare for me, that I didn't realize a car was coming straight for me. Luckily for me, I wasn't badly hurt. As you can imagine, I was very shocked and burst into tears. When my grandmother heard the scream, she was horrified. What would you do in that situation? Imagine your one and only granddaughter has just been hit by a car and is crying on the ground. Well, my nan knew exactly what to do. She took her bolillo and handed it to me. I don't remember if she ate her bolillo, but I had one for sure. So, after being in such a serious situation, I took it for granted that a bolillo was a solution whenever somebody got scared. Somebody would always say, eat a bolillo to calm them down. And it made perfect sense to me. How can a bolillo relax you? In my childish mind, I thought a bolillo was a magical, powerful instrument that can calm you down, even in your worst anxiety. Obviously, I asked on Instagram, a lot, and a lot of people believe the bolillo is a perfect remedy to relieve anxiety. What do you think about the magical bolillo? Well guys, I think that's everything for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making these weird things that Mexicans do. And because I'm always talking about them with my husband or with friends. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as, much as I enjoyed it. And I, I do have more ideas about this topic, but it's the first time that I'm making this video and I don't know if you're gonna enjoy it, if you want me to make more videos about these topics, if you want me to make another video, please let me know in the comments. 
So also, if you have another idea about this topic, let me know in, in the comments and I can create something funny to say in the next video. So thank you very much, guys. My name is Karen. I'm a Mexican living in Mexico, specifically in Querétaro, and I hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next video. Adios. Guys, I have to confess that this isn't called bolillo. Actually, this is a telera. There was a mistake. This is a bolillo. And as you can see, there's a little difference in the shape and this is a little bit thinner. I did this on purpose because I wanted to see if people would correct me in the comments. Just look at the comments and tell me if there are people saying, ah, oh, stupid Mexican woman, that's not a bolillo, that's a telera. And if you were one of those who wrote that, thank you for the interaction. <laughs> <laughs> if I have more comments on my videos, YouTube promotes the videos more. So thank you very much.